Welcome to Happily Holistic. I'm Amy Lee Mercury, and I'm a medical intuitive with 20 years of experience. I've written 15 books on health and wellness. If you've had a medical intuitive session with me, you know that the thoughts and emotions within you, what has been passed down from your ancestors, and everything that surrounds you can impact your well-being. In this podcast, we touch on my favorite ways for you to improve your health and feel more joy. We dive deeply into everything health and wellness with a big dash of spirituality and a sprinkle of business. We spotlight the uplifting and the positive and share the secret ways top wellness authors and celebrities get inspired, stay healthy, and enjoy this beautiful life. I can't wait to get happily holistic with you today. Hello, hello, and welcome to Happily Holistic. I am so excited to be here today with Barbara Hewson. Welcome, Barbara. Thanks. I'm so glad to be here with you too. Yay. I've been a huge fan of Barbara's for many years. Um, Her three books that really helped me along my over earning secrets of sin and sacred success. And now Barbara has a new book coming out rewire for wealth that we're going to talk about in a little bit. And I also understand by Barbara is a financial therapist and wealth coach and empowering women is her mission, which I love. So Barbara, tell us how, uh, how you came to this, field, how you came to this, this vocation and all of the things you share with us about how we can empower ourselves. You know, I, I had a line in my first book, Prince Charming Isn't Coming, that my, that my editor deleted. She said mm. it was corny. And the line was, in our deepest pain lies our highest purpose. And I came, I came to write this to to do this work and write my books because money was my deepest pain. Mm. I I was raised in a wealthy family. My father was the R of H in our block. And the only advice he ever gave me about money was don't worry, which I thought was great advice. Until I realized I was married to a man who was a stockbroker, but I found out very early in our marriage, he was a compulsive gambler Mm. and over the course of our 15 year marriage I find out every year a bunch of times he was gambling my inheritance away and and I continue to let him manage the money because that's how intimidated I was and terrified by anything financial and finally after our divorce I decided money is not my thing I just do not want to deal with money well, I had this theory, if you do not deal with money, your money will deal with you. And I got tax bills for almost $2 million for back taxes my ex didn't pay for illegal deals. Wow. Uh, and my signature was on everything. I did not have $2 million, not even close to a million, not even, I, I and my ex had left the country and my father wouldn't lend me the money. And I had three daughters and I was not going to raise them on the street. I was determined, but I I read books. I go to classes. My Mm -hmm. eyes would glaze over. I just, but I was committed. I was committed. And I believe, I really do. When you're committed, like no backdoor commitment, the Mm -hmm. universe revolves to help you reach your goal. And I was working as a journalist writing for the San Francisco Business Times. And I got hired for a project to interview money, women who were smart with money. And th- those interviews be- changed my life. I not only became smart about money, but I wrote my first book, Prince Charming Isn't Coming, How Women Get Smart About Money. And now, seven books later, and here I am. Wow, yes. Tell us your, so Prince Charming Isn't Coming, and then I know four or five of your books. So what books am I missing in the list? So Prince Charming Isn't Coming was my first book. Yes. And that really got me understanding how money works, but Mm -hmm. I didn't understand how to make money because suddenly I had this whole new career. I was traveling all over the country, but I couldn't make money. So I interviewed women who made six figures and I made 
over six figures before I even finished writing the second book, Secrets of Six Figure Women. Amazing. Then I wanted to see if I could teach others what I learned and started doing workshops, overcoming under earning. And that became my third book. And then Sacred Success became my fourth book. And now, and then I have two others, how to find a financial advisor you can trust Uh and breaking through getting past the stuck points. Love. January, 2021, which is probably so everyone will be able to get that. And I'm sure we can pre-order that now too. Yeah, it's available for pre-order now. Exciting, exciting. So it was kind of out of necessity that you began this career. It was, I think it was divinely ordained, actually. It was divinely ordained that I would get this wealthy family, that I would have a trust fund, that I would meet a compulsive gambler, and that I would hit bottom, and then I would teach myself how to get smart. And it it, it was divinely ordained. Absolutely. As so many things in our lives are in retrospect, right? Well, I think everything is divinely ordained, but we can choose to follow it or not. That too. That too. So for our audience, if we're going to talk to our audience about these ways that we can kind of overcome under earning, but also rewire for wealth, because I'm very excited to dive into that too. But to start to overcome under earning and to help us embrace our money and really be friends with our money. What would you, what would you tell us like three things that we could do this week to start that process? Well, I read, I wrote two books on earning the secrets Mm -hmm. of six figure women, but the truth is the work I do is to help women create wealth. Yeah. And, and wealth does not come from what you earn. Wealth comes from what you do with what you earn. Mm. Wealth comes from, you create wealth three ways. You spend less, you save more, and you invest wisely. And that, so you can become wealthy and be not earn a lot of money. Uh, I, one of the biggest surprise I had when interviewing women, for, I interviewed 154 women who were making six and seven figures, how few of them were wealthy, how mm-hmm. few of them had were protecting themselves financially. They were so busy making money. They had what I call the illusion of wealth without having any, without having anything to show for it. So I, I'm, so I think earning is important. An under earner, let me just describe it. Under earner is anyone who says, who wants to earn more money, but can't despite her desire or her, efforts to do otherwise. Mm -hmm. So in other words, anytime you find yourself saying, I wish I made more money, but you're an under earner. Now you can make six figures and be an under earner and you can make far less and not be. I I, I have two, two of my daughters, one's a farmer and one's a, um, (laughs) one's a journalist. Neither of them make a lot of money, but neither of them are under earners. They make enough to meet their needs and they're doing what they love because it feeds their soul. But right. under earning is never, a never feeds your soul. It is always a condition of deprivation and not just of money, but of time, of joy, of choices, and most of all, of self-esteem. Absolutely. So if, if someone is earning and yet here's a echo here's an echo of themselves when you talk about these women who wealth or security or you know making these gains what would you suggest is like a first step to move in that direction you know you cut out so i'm not sure okay. what your what your questions but if they want to make more money or if they want to increase their earnings what's the first step If they are earning, but they aren't moving forward, so they're not investing it, or they're just kind of living paycheck to paycheck. I'll tell you the the number one requirement to Mm -hmm. go to the next level in earnings, or in anything, I don't care if it's making more money or losing more weight, Mm -hmm. it's always doing what's uncomfortable to do. I ask under earners, when's the last time you did something you didn't think you could do? And they'll scratch their heads and I ask high earners that same question and they'll go all the time. It's a way of life. There's there's what I call a high earner slogan. If it's not illegal or immoral, I just say yes. So the key, the key to overcoming under earning 
is doing what you fear, doing yes. what you don't think you can do or doing what you don't want to do. I love that. So, so my, my kids, they always call me whenever they feel stuck or don't know what to do or want to go to the next level and don't know how to get there. And I always say the same thing. And they always know I'm going to say this. I always say, what are you most scared to do? Mm. And they'll, they'll tell me. And then I said, that's exactly what you need to do. That's what you do. So do what you fear and that's how you succeed. Mm -hmm. But the key yeah. is, but the key is in that doing what you fear, you need to surround yourself with support. You need to get support because we are, we women are so relationship oriented. We it's are. really important that we have support. Mm -hmm. We absolutely are. And so your new book, Rewire for Wealth, tell us about that and what are we rewiring? Tell us about all, all of it. So I spent 20 some years be, being a financial therapist, a wealth mm -hmm. coach. And about six years ago, I started feeling like something was missing from this work. There was something that I, I just knew there was something missing and I didn't know what it was. And one day I was just going through my email and an article about neuroscience showed up. Yes. And, and I read this article and I swear my brain must have lit up like a slot machine and said, this is the missing piece. Yes. And the more I understood about neuroscience and I started adding it into my work, I realized this component can really speed up the learning curve and really lessen people's resistance to mm -hmm. becoming financially successful. So essentially our brain, which is a organ in our head, is is it has one purpose and one purpose only and that is to keep us safe and make sure we survive mm -hmm. and our brain is what controls our behavior our behavior everything about what we do whether it's inhaling and exhale or spending and saving is controlled by our brain and going against a hardwired brain is like going against gravity because that's how it learned to keep us safe Yes. We'll be right back after this short break. Hi, it's Amy Lee Mercree. I'm so grateful to be a part of my medical intuitive clients' journeys of healing and evolution. We're all on our own paths to greater health and self-actualization. In a medical intuitive session with me, we connect deeply with your spirit guides and ancestors and dig into the root causes of what's going on in your physical body, emotions, mind, energetic body, and spirit. To learn more about my medical intuitive work, check out the Work With Me page on amyleemercree.com. Now our mind is not a physical organ. It is a non-physical entity, which is the source of our thoughts and feelings. Mm -hmm. And it works like this, the, what flows through the mind sculpts the brain. So every thought and feeling we have releases yes. chemicals and, and, and electrical impulses in the brain that talk in the neurons that go to the neurons and the neurons communicate through from neural pathways. Yes. So the thoughts create those neural pathways. And every time we think a thought, it goes, it digs it deeper and yes. deeper until that be, neural pathway becomes hardwired and that behavior becomes a habit. So if you want yeah. to change anything in your life, if you want to create more money, more happiness, more success, you must train your mind to rewire your brain for wealth and well being and whatever else you want. Yes. I love that. And for listeners who don't know, I'm a huge fan of Barbara's. I read Secrets of Six Figure Women, which was really, it was revolutionary for me at that time to read that book, to be, you know, kind of acknowledging that that would be a possibility for me to be a six figure woman, by the way. And Overcoming Under Earning is a tremendous book. Sacred Success is a tremendous book. And I'm really excited for this book, Barbara. I'm a huge neuroscience aficionado. And I'm really excited to see how you are bringing these things together. I'm just excited to do 
what's ever in there. I'm, <laughs> I'm very, very excited about it. So if you can give I, us like I, a, mm, yeah, tell me. I'm very, I'm very proud. Yeah. How I took neuroscience I knew nothing about and had lots of clients who were guinea pigs, did mm -hmm. lots of retreats and really took neuroscience with psychology, with spirituality, with personal finance and created a very simple formula for Wonderful. rewiring your brain. Wonderful. I'm excited to read it. If our love in it preview, like, is there like a, almost like a little exercise we could do or anything like that? That comes well, to I'll, mind? I'll give you the three steps. Let's do that. To rewire your brain. And on my website, mm. barbara-houston.com, barbara-houston.com, there is a free ebook that, that tells you how to, it's like a, a, it's like a taste of what's in the book, but it, awesome. it, gives, it goes over the three steps and gives examples. So here are the three steps and then I'll explain what they are. Okay. The three steps are recognize, reframe, and respond differently. So what you do is you recognize your you start recognizing your negative thoughts because you can't change anything until you're aware of it. So you start noticing the thought that is keeping you, the negative judgmental or critical thoughts. Mm -hmm. And then you go, then you observe it as you would a uh, an impartial spectator, like you're doing this out of body. Oh, yes. you observe it with curiosity. Isn't mm -hmm. this interesting? I'm having a thought about that thought is not true. It is a thought in my head that's been programmed. So observe, recognize it and observe it with curiosity. Isn't that interesting? Okay. Second, reframe that thought. Mm -hmm. How can you see it differently? How can you see it through the eyes of love and excitement and possibility instead of through the eyes of fear? Yes. And then finally, respond differently. We do what you don't want to do, do what doesn't feel normal, do what doesn't feel right. Keep doing that, do, responding differently over and over and over again. And before you know it, that brain, it will be rewired and I your behavior that. will change. I love that. And so we can apply that to anything. Yeah. I, you know, I'll give you an example of how I yeah. applied it about okay. a couple months ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so I was, I wrote this book and I, and in my uh, team, gave me a project. They, they thought we, we were brainstorming. They thought of a project I should do. And I thought, I don't want to do it. I have never done anything like this before. It scared me. I didn't want to do it. I love and when I thought, they do that, by the way, my team too. And I'll be like, good, tell me these things because I won't think of them, but I need to know them. So keep going. So I saw how scared I was to do it. I told them I didn't want to do it. And I thought, wait, it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Let me rewire this. Let me apply what I write about. So I started observing my thoughts regarding mm -hmm. this project. And I thought my thought is I can't, I can't do this. But under that was deeper as a thought, I don't have what it takes. Wow. I don't have what it takes to do this. So I recognized that thought and I just observed it with curiosity. Isn't that interesting? I'm having a thought that I don't have what it takes. It's not true. It's just a belief that came from somewhere. Mm -hmm. But I'm just having this thought. And then I second, I needed to reframe it. So how could I reframe this? And I thought, maybe I'll say, I have what it takes, but that didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. And then I reframed it. Oh, I can handle this. I can handle whatever comes up. I can handle this. And I wrote it down. I can handle mm -hmm. this. Now, I didn't believe it. But here's the thing. You don't have to believe it. You don't have to believe it. If you think something enough, it will be wired in your brain as a belief. So what I did is after I reframed it, I can handle this. I started doing what I didn't want to do. I started writing the script. I started writing the uh, emails. I didn't want to do it. It felt awful. I didn't want to do it. I would get up. I forced myself to come back. Yes. And after about two or three days, it started getting easier. And then mm. it started getting easier. And the project turned out actually fun because I recognized, I reframed, and I responded differently over and over and over again. You rewired your brain. 
I love that. I love that. I have a dance class where sometimes our teacher says, in your freestyle in this, you know, song or whatever, I want you to not do the first movement impulse you have. Stop and then do a movement impulse that feels uncomfortable or foreign to you. And it really re helps and then everything it makes you a more cognitively flexible person. And in this case, a dancer too, because you're doing these things that in, a, in the physical movement sphere that don't come first and naturally and come up first. It's and if you apply that advice your dance yeah. teacher gave you to your career, to anyone, apply that yeah. advice to your career, to finances. Yes. Don't do what feels natural. If you want to change something, don't do what feels natural. Do what is not your first impulse to do. Mm -hmm. And that will that's how you start rewiring your brain. Yes then you can take things to the next level that you desire. But the important thing in terms of money and success mm -hmm. is you need to, to recognize and reframe first because that gives you the mental training. So when you, when you eventually succeed, your mind and your brain, I believe, are, are, are in cahoots. In other words, I believe the reason so many women have the imposter syndrome is because they powered through and responded differently, but they didn't take mm. the time to reframe, to see mm -hmm. it differently. So their, their, who they were, their self-image didn't catch up to yes. the success they were having. I think you're right about that. Absolutely. And so if, if that, how do they get themselves that mindset where they can frame into who they truly are, who they become? What do you think? Well, you know, you just, like you just uh, stopped again. You just froze. Ah, I'm so goodness. sorry, but you repeat the question. I absolutely will. And I'm sure our listeners want me to too, because they could probably couldn't hear it either. I said for, for our listeners who that's ringing true for, that they feel that imposter syndrome in the sense that they've achieved what they want, but they didn't reframe. How could they reframe their thoughts? Like, what would what steps would they take to to get into that new well, place well it's a, it's exactly what i said when you find yourself yes. having negative or critical yes. thoughts about who you are right. oh i'm nothing i'm nobody oh that's mm -hmm. not me oh they think i'm a fraud recognize those thoughts recognize yes. Recognize it with, oh, isn't that interesting? I'm having a thought that I'm a fraud. I'm having a thought that I'm nobody. I'm nothing. Yes. And then reframe it. See it differently. How can I see this differently? Oh, you could do, I, I have what it takes. Or I can do this. I can achieve this. Or even this is an opportunity for me to rewire. And then right. respond differently. And notice how you're feeling. Notice how you're feeling and re reframe those feelings too. Yes. I love that. I love that. I can't read to, wait to read Rewire for Wealth. It's coming soon. It is. Yes. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Barbara. Thank you for it's having been, me. It's, yes. it's been so wonderful to get to connect with you and share some of these tips. And you can find Barbara right? And, uh, oh, did I say that correctly? Well, I don't know. You, you cut out. <laughs> oh my gosh. I know this is crazy. But oh my gosh. Well, good that you said, because then you, we'll all repeat. You can find me on my website. Yes. Barbara-Houston.com. Perfect. 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 Thank you so much for being here and bearing through our technical issues. Thank you so much for having me and bearing through the technical issues. I appreciate it so much. <laughs> And thank you all for listening to Happily Holistic. We hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for listening to Happily Holistic with me, Amy Lee Mercree. You can find out more about the show on amyleemercree.com on the podcast page. Please stop by your favorite social platform and leave me a comment. I'd love to hear how you liked today's show and what topics you'd like me to cover in the future. Come find me on Instagram and Facebook at amyleemercree.com. If you would like to see what a medical intuitive session with me is all about, hop on over to the work with me page on amyleemercree.com. 
Until next time, stay happily holistic.